Okay, Year 11, I'm going to go over the work that we've done in the past two lessons, well, mainly the work we did in the lesson today. And uh, some summary of the notes of, or summary of the work that we've done thus far. So we've been doing functions and we know that a function is a relation where for every x value there is a unique y value. Um, and we can write a function as y equals something to x. Or we can write it as some function of x equals something x. And we can have different powers, uh, power squared, a cubed, a half, anything like that. And the way to see if something is a function is to, to make sure it passes the vertical line test. So something like this, y equals x squared, passes a vertical line test. Whereas something like uh, this, um, x squared plus y squared equals 1, doesn't pass the vertical line test because I can draw a vertical line and hit it in two spots. So now we understand what we're doing with functions, then there are some special things with functions we need to be able to remember. And that is an even function, an even function, which is just, an even function is just a reflection in the y axis, a reflection in the y axis. So again, y equals x squared is an even function. And you can tell because it's got y equals x squared. And if I look down the y equals x, this side, the right hand side, is reflected over here. If I folded it over, it would form exactly on top of each other. And we find that by going, does f of x equal f of negative x? And that's pretty obvious there because here is positive f of x and here is f of minus x, and they're the same. You get the same line value. The other type of function is an odd function, and that is a rotation of 180 degrees about the origin, which means if you just turned it clockwise, or anti-clockwise, because you're going 180, half the revolution, it doesn't matter, it'd be the same thing. So for example, our cubic, which looks something like that, if I rotated that, if I rotated that 180 degrees that way, you'd end up with the same thing. And the way we determine that, if something is an odd function, f of minus x equals minus f of x. All right, so even odd functions, and they're good because what that does, that allows you, you only have to draw half the curve, and then in the case of the even ones, you just copy it, reflect it on the other side. And the same with the odd function, you only have to draw half the curve, and then you just rotate it 180, and away you go, you've got the whole curve. So we're now concentrating on linear functions. We're now concentrating on linear functions. Okay, so let's have a look at a linear function. So a linear function, y equals ax plus by plus c. Oh, sorry, not y equals. ax plus by plus c equals zero. And that is what we call the general form. It's a way we tend to write, just so we have a standard. It's not very useful, though. Uh, it doesn't tell us anything. I suppose um, 
Well, no, it doesn't really tell us anything. What we want is this form, which is y equals mx plus c. Now, it used to be b, but in the new syllabus, we're using the letter c for the y-intercept. And this is the gradient intercept form of the line because this tells us the gradient or we can just sub in the gradient and this tells us the y intercept and you would have remembered that from your junior high school days when you were plotting straight lines now if I know the gradient and the y-intercept, writing the equation of a line is quite easy. I mean, if I look over here at the very first question, write the equation of the straight line with a gradient of 4 and a y-intercept of negative 1. Well, I'll just write y equals 4x, because the gradient's 4, minus 1. I could write plus minus 1, but I'll just write minus 1. It's rather easy. And even with the next one, if I look here, a gradient of negative 3 and passing through 0, 4. Well, 0, 4 is actually the y-intercept because the x value is 0. So again, this is quite easy. B, y equals negative 3x, and the y-intercept is 4, so I write plus 4. So if you know the gradient and the y-intercept, off you go, and you can write the equation of the line. But what else do we know? about the linear equation. Well, we also know how to calculate the gradient. And there are lots of ways to do this. You can, and we're going to call the gradient of a straight line M. And it equals the rise over the run. If you want to draw a right angle triangle and calculate that. Um, it also equals tan theta, the angle that make theta makes with the positive axis. Because when you think about it, tan is opposite over adjacent. And if you've got a straight line and you want to find the angle that that makes, here's your opposite, which is the rise. And here is your run, which is the adjacent. And that's what tan theta is. And finally, we have a formula, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which you just put the points in, subtract the y values, subtract the x values in the same order, keeping the points in order, and you will get the gradient. Okay, so you can draw a diagram, you can go tan theta, you can do two points over the top of each other, subtracting the y values and subtracting the x values. All right, but now what we're concerned about is finding the equation of a line. If we know the gradient, the y-intercept, we can do that. But there's one more formula. If I take that gradient formula and I do this, m equals, and I'm just going to write y minus y1, because I'm not going to substitute in a point, and x minus x1. And I go, oh, I'm just going to multiply that x minus x1 across. I'll get m outside of x minus x1 equals y minus y1. And I'll write the y minus y1 on the left-hand side, y minus y1 on the left-hand side equals m outside of x minus x1. And that is really, really useful. You are going to use that so much. It's called the point gradient formula. So if you have a point x1 and y1 and a gradient m, you can just plug them into that and you can get the equation of the line. All right, 
remember you can plot points, you can draw a graph, you can uh, use all sorts of different methods for finding the equation of the line. Let's go back to exercise 406. I want you to go and have a go at them. If you're having, so go away, have a go at them. If you're having trouble, come back. I'm going to go and do them now. So hopefully you've gone away, you've come back. I've got, with this one, a gradient of five and it passes through the origin. So C, so that was A, that's B. C is Y equals, oh, it's 5X and the Y intercept is zero. So I don't need to add anything. Now with number or 1D, I've got a gradient of four and an X intercept of negative five. So here's 1D. I'm just going to draw it. It's a gradient of 4, and I'm just going to do a quick sketch. A gradient of 4 and an x intercept of negative 5. So the x intercept is negative 5. Uh, sorry, the x. The x intercept is negative 5. So the x intercept is negative 5. So negative 5. And it's got a gradient of 4. So that means. It's positive, it's going up, and it's pretty steep. I need that y intercept if I need, if I'm going to write it, y equals mx plus b. But I know the gradient is 4. Well, if the gradient is 4, what does that mean? Well, if m equals 4, it's really 4 over 1. And the 4 is the rise. And the one is a run. So if I go one across, I've got to go four up. So if I go one across here, I've got to go four up. If I go another one across, well, I've gone eight up. If I go another one across, I go 12 up. And I've got to go from five to zero. So I've got to go five across. So one across, four up. Two across, another four up, so that'll be eight up. Okay, if I go five across, oh, five fours, oh, 20 up. So this value here is 20. Having an understanding of what the gradient is helps you. So now I can write this equation, y equals 4x plus 20. There's another way to do it though. We have the gradient, m equals 4, and we have a point. Oh, what was that? Well, we have this point here, and that point is negative 5, 0. And we can use our equation y minus y1 equals m outside of x minus x1. So I'm going to put that in for x, that in for y, and that in for m. Ah, y minus 0 equals 4x minus minus 5. Okay, well, y minus zero is just y, and I'm going to multiply four times that and four times that. Well, four times x is four x. Minus minus five becomes plus five, and four times five is 20. And we achieve the same result. Okay, so with this one, E, again, you can draw it. Or you can just use the two points. What do you mean the two points? Well, the two points are, the two points are x-intercept of 1. x-intercept of 1. So that's 1 and 0. y-intercept of 3. Well, that's 0 and 3. You've got two points. But let's try drawing it first, because sometimes that's a lot easier. Well, it goes through 1 and 0, and 0 and 3. 
So the line is coming down there. Well, it's negative gradient. And straight away, you can see the gradient because there's the rise and there's the run. So the gradient is 3. Well, hold on. It's going down. It's got to be negative 3. And then I can use either one of these points, 1 and 0, or 0 and 3, and use my equation. But I don't even need to. I've got the y int. Look at all these different methods. I've got the y intercept. So the equation is y equals negative 3x plus 3. Well, let's see if I was just using these two points. Well, I know what the gradient is, m equals negative 3. And let's substitute one of these into that equation. Let's take the first one, 1, 0, where that's x and that's y. y minus 0 equals negative 3, x minus 1. Or oh, y equals negative 3, x. And negative 3 times negative 1 plus 3. It pops out. So it doesn't matter how you do it, but we need to be become good algebraically. So we need to be able to use the point gradient formula. Okay, so you can do F on your own. It's the same as uh, E. I now want to look at question two. And if I look at question two, they give me two points. Now, if you go and read some other textbooks, they'll say, oh, there's a thing called the two-point formula. So I'm going to do 2A. And I'm going to show you a couple of ways to do this. The first way is with your calculator. So pull out your calculator. And what we want to do is we want to set it to stat mode. So we go set up and we set it to stat mode. Now you get a number of options over here of what you want to do with this data. Now number one is just your basic stats, your variable data stats. But the rest of them are regression formulas. They will fit your two points or however many points you want to make it see what it looks like as a line, what it would equate to, so or a parabola or a log or an exponential. So we want the linear regression, which is number two. But note, it's a plus bx. So we pick number two and then we go, oh, what are your x and y values? Well, Let's take the two that we just did, 1003. 1003 and see if we get the same thing. So 1 for x, and we go across and we use our arrow, 0. Oh, I didn't need to do it. And uh, 3 for y. So we've got 1, 0, and 0, 3. You press all clear, and then you go. Shift, 1, and you get these stats. Now, number 1 tells you you can change what type of data you're going to be doing, whether or not you want to do a different regression formula or whether you want to do you're just a variable stats. Number 2 allows you to change the points, the data. The one we're interested in is number 5, the regression. So if we hit number 5, now, remember, it was y equals a plus bx, so a will give us our y-intercept. Well, let's see if we get 3 when we press the number 1. Oh, so we know that the y-intercept is 3. Let's press Shift and 1 again, get the regression formula, and we want the gradient, so we'll press number 2, because the b was in front of the x, and we'll press equals, and we get negative 3. So your calculator will do a linear regression for two points, which is a straight line. Okay. But what points have we got? 2, 5, negative 1, 1. So here's question 2. We've got 2, 5, and negative 1, 1. We'll use our calculator again. And this time, I'm going to go shift one and i'm going to change the data so again number two i'm going to change the points so two there negative one there go across and up 
and five there and one there. Just give it a quick double check. Two five, negative one one. Press the all clear. Go shift stat number one. We want the regression number five. Let's get the y in a set first, number one. Two point three 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 three. Oh, I don't want to write that. I could write two point three repeater, but let's keep it as a fraction. So let's write shift. And it gives me two and a third. That's a fraction. When you're in stat mode, your calculator will write fractions like that. That's two and a third. Or if I just press that, it'll give me seven on three. Why don't I do that? So I go back here. Y equals. Now remember that A was a Y intercept. So we've got something X plus seven on three. Go back to our calculator. We need the gradient. The gradient is the B. So we go shift that stat number one. We want the regression again. And this time we want the gradient. One third. One point three three three. Let's press SD. Four on three. Okay. So the gradient is four on three. Now, that won't be the same as the answer in the back of the book, but it is a correct answer, and it's written in gradient intercept form. If we want to write it in general form, we've got to multiply everything by 3 to get rid of the 3s. And because it's an equation, if we multiply everything by 3, we'll be all right. So we'll get 3y equals 4x, because the 3s cancel, plus 7. Now, remember general form, something x, something y, something. And the something x must be positive. So we're just going to minus the 3y. So we get 0. The 4x stays the same. I minus the 3y. And I've got plus 7. And that is a general form. So your calculator will do it. We need to be better than that. We need to be able to use algebraic skills. So how do we do it? Well, I wrote these points here above one another for a reason. So here I go, I'm going to do it in blue. First, I'm going to calculate the gradient. And the gradient is the y values subtracted over the x values subtracted. So I've got them here. Here are the y values. Here are the x values. So I'm just going to go 5 minus 1. They're the y values. Over the x values, 2 minus negative 1. Now, you must maintain the order. You must do it in the same order, otherwise you could stuff it up. 5 minus 1 is 4, and 2 minus minus 1 is 3. I'd use your calculator, because even though you you might be good at the arithmetic, you may make a mistake, and you don't want to lose marks for silly errors. So there's my gradient. If only I had a point. Oh, I've got two points here. I can use either one of these. And I'm going to. I'm going to do it with both so you can see. So first I'm going to do it with the top point. Y minus, what's the Y value? 5 equals 4 on 3. That's a gradient. X minus 2. Okay. When you get to this juncture, some people say to multiply that 4 thirds through. I reckon that's a mistake. Multiply the 3 over the other side, but you've got to multiply it by both things. So we get 3y minus 15. And now I multiply the 4 through here. And I get 4x minus 8. Now, again, I want everything on one side, so I'm going to bring the 3y and the 15 over to the right-hand side. So 0. I've already got a 4x, so keep that out the front. I'm going to minus that 3y to bring it across. I've got a minus 8, and I'm going to add that 15. So I get 0 equals 4x minus 3y plus 7 which is the correct answer. If I use the other coordinate, which was 1, negative 1, 1, 
Let's see if I get the same answer. Y minus 1 equals 4 on 3, X minus minus 1. Well, that's Y minus 1 equals 4 on 3, X plus 1. I multiply the 3 across again, making sure I multiply it by both things. I'm going to multiply the 4 through here. So I get 3Y minus 3 equals 4X plus 4. Now I've got to bring everything across. So I've got the 4X. I minus the 3Y. I've got the 4 and I add the 3. So I get 4X minus 3. I forgot the Y there. 3Y plus 7. So it doesn't matter what point you get. And you just use those two points to get the gradient and away you go, subbing whichever point you find most easiest to do. So you need to go and do those questions. Uh, if you have a look at these ones, they're pretty easy. Go and have a go at them. If you're having trouble, come back. So if you've come back now, and I'm doing 4A, it says parallel to the x-axis through the point 2, 3. Well, if it's parallel to the x-axis, the x-axis is like this. There's the x-axis. And it's going through 2, 3. So it took a, oh, it's got to be going like that. Oh. It's going to be y equals 3. There's no x in it. It's just y equals 3. Now, the next one is parallel to the y-axis. So the y-axis is that. And it's going through negative 1 and 2. So here's the x-axis, negative 1 down here. And two, and it's got to be parallel to the y-axis, so it's going there. Oh, that's just x equals two. So when you get ones like that, they, they, you're going, oh, I don't know what to. They're easy. Now, the other thing we need to talk about in mathematics advanced that is now common with standard is a thing called the break even point and the break even point relates to business equations where you have an income and a cost And the break-even point is when the income and the costs are the same. And it means you make no money. Your income from whatever it is you're producing is the same as your costs. You don't lose anything. You don't make anything. So usually the income is in dollars and the cost is in the production of, uh, sorry, the whatever you're producing, some product or some service and you might be I don't know selling cakes and you sell cakes and you sell the cakes for a dollar a cake so and I'm going to just write um, what do we call this and I don't want to call it cost we'll call it D for dollars up here and P for product so D equals 1P, one dollar for every piece of cake or product, whatever it is. Now, it might cost you 50 cents to make the cake, but you've got to count your labor. You've got to count your, um, your electricity, if you're paying someone to help you sell them. 
So let's say your startup costs are ten dollars. But that's before you even bought anything. You've paid someone to help you sell them for an hour, five dollars an hour, you're ripping them off. And your other costs, like for hiring a spot at the fate or wherever it is you're selling them. But it only costs you 50 cents to sell them. So eventually you're going to get a point here where you've sold enough to break even. And after that, everything in between this area here is profit. All right? So an equation for those costs, and we'll use D again because it's in dollars, is 50 cents. So a half P, a half a dollar, and I'll P, half a dollar, plus the $10 startup. Now, if you drew the graph very accurately, you would be able to read off this point. And I reckon, or well, I've come to believe that they're going, that's how they're going to do it. You're going to be told, find the break-even point. You're just going to read off how many products it is. But you can solve these two simultaneously just by putting them together. 1p equals a half p plus 10, where p is your product, and that's how many you're going to find. I'll subtract the half p from both sides, so I get a half p equals 10, so I'm minus a half p, and I'm going to multiply by 2, so I'm going to get p equals 20, which means to break even, you've got to sell 20 cakes. And that's the break even point. I'm pretty sure that you're going to get asked a graphic question, but let's have a look at how you might do this for question six, seven, all right, here. So TV manufacturer. Now, the TV manufacturer business has fixed cost of $1,500 for rent, $3,000 for wages, and $2,500 each week of other costs. It could be electricity, it could be, who knows. And it costs 250 to make each TV. Okay. So write an equation for the cost of producing N TVs each week. N TVs. So here's question six. So what was it? The cost equals, well, it was 3,000, 1,500 and 2,500. So 3,000 plus 2,500 plus 1,500. And that's even before you make one TV. But it's 250 times N TVs. Okay, so if we add all these together, well, 2,500 plus 1,500, 3, 4, plus the 3, $7,000 plus 250 times the number of TVs. That's how much it's going to cost you. If you make one TV, it would be 7,250. If, if you make two TVs, it'll be 7,500. If you've got N TVs, it's 7,000 plus 2,500. Now, I'm going to skip part B and C. I'm going straight to D. If each TV sells for $950, if each TV sells for $950, find the number of TVs to sell to break even. Now you could do that graphically. You could graph that and you could find an equation. Let's find an equation for our income. And it's 950 for every TV. So for one TV, 950. For two TVs, 950 for two. For three TVs, 950 times three. For N TVs, 950 times N. All right. So to find the break-even point, we have to find when they're equal. So the break-even point is when 950 
n equals 7,000 plus 250n. Well, if I minus 250n from both sides, because we know how to do equations, I'll get 700n equals 7,000. And if I divide 700, I'll get 10 TVs. You only have to sell 10 TVs to make or to break even. 10 TVs. But that's a week because these costs are weekly costs. So you have to sell 10 TVs a week. Right? Because those costs were each week. So every week, you've got to sell 10 TVs. Now, you need to have a go at the rest of those. If you have any problems with them, uh, send me an email. But otherwise, plough through them, put the time into them, and keep on doing the work and keep up to date. Remember, make sure you contact if you're having issues.